So for the first day of class, we need to look at the syllabus briefly. There's a new syllabus in the network folder. If you'd like to access that, you can open up computer window. And then inside of the classroom data folder, network location drive Z, scroll down and then you can see uh, Campus Social 2. There's the code of conduct and the syllabus. So copy those two to your desktop. You'll be able to print them later, but the it's got like six pages, you don't really need to print it. And I'll turn the printer on again later. You can email it to yourself, you can upload it to your Dropbox and such. So, uh, open up the syllabus. There's my email, you, you should have it from last month, but if you, if you don't, if you weren't here, Last month, uh, there's my email. So this class goes from 7717 to 72817 uh, for four weeks. And uh, we're going to continue to use social media. We're going to focus on Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Instagram this month. We're going to talk about various aspects of setting up your profile, tips and tricks to get traffic. Uh, recommended skill levels. Well, we're using Windows computers in this lab, so if you uh, don't have any experience using Windows computers, you can uh, ask for help and I'll help you out, but basic computer knowledge is highly recommended. Last month I recommended a book, and it's the same book, Social Media Bible by Lon Safko. I still recommend it. It's a good uh, book that targets the general ideas of social media and online marketing. Uh, we will have various methods of instruction, lecture, perhaps group discussion, etc. We've got the learning outcomes of the college. Uh, these are ideas that the college believes in, social responsibility, effective communication, etc. You can read this on your own. Our program, our department, is all about these concepts. You can read that. And then our class specifically, the things that we will uh, that we will have as outcomes of what we hope to accomplish. We're going to create the business profiles on Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Instagram. We're going to compare the effectiveness of Pinterest boards, design a LinkedIn page for business, and manage Instagram stories. So again, if that jargon doesn't make sense at the moment, it should make sense by the end of the course. Further objectives of the course, assemble content in boards for in Pinterest for visibility, construct a LinkedIn business page for discovery, and formulate an Instagram strategy for sharing. So we'll go through all of those <coughs> concepts and apply them in terms of your business. This is an open entry, open exit, short-term course. As such, there are no completion requirements like assessments, so tests and such. There are, uh, there are no grades. Uh, units or degrees conferred upon conclusion. So you don't uh, have any homework to do, uh, but you don't get any certificates, you don't get any anything like that. You get hopefully real-world content that you can apply to your businesses. Here's our outline of what I hope to accomplish. Make a note on the 21st. Uh, there is no class. There will be no class. So accordingly, we'll plan for that, and I'll remind you next week also. So we'll need two weeks, then we'll need on the fourth week, and then the class will go into part three of the class. We have counseling and disability support services if you need them here on campus. Our policies regarding a, uh, attendance, this is just sort of boilerplate. I have to put it in in general, but for our class, it doesn't really apply. Open entry, doesn't matter if you know you miss a day, technically for us, for the school, and all of that. So you can kind of ignore this, but other classes do have to keep track of uh, attendance and hours. Be mindful of that. 
communicate with me either email or in person if you have any concerns as the class goes on about, about the class. There's a section on academic dishonesty and policy which uh, I don't really think applies to us. I think we're all probably honest people in this room, right? Everyone agrees? You're all honest? Okay, so in this class, you know, uh, in, on our campus that is, if we have strong rules against plagiarism and, and all of that, it'll affect your final grade. You know, that grade that you're not getting in this class, but it'll affect your final grade. And I have to put it in here because of the rules. Uh, classroom behavior and uh, disciplinary uh, actions here. Uh, so things to avoid in the classroom to keep it a safe environment. You can read that on your own and you will agree to abide by it. There's also a longer list of these classroom rules on the board under student code of conduct, which you should read and understand that you will abide by if you enroll in the class, if you sign in, and if you stay in class, you've agreed, agreed that you've read these, and you will follow these, or you can be removed from the class. Uh, we have a diversity pledge here for the college. Uh, you can read the whole thing at our site. This is something the college believes in, as well as I. We have a diverse student population, and we welcome everyone. Computer usage, you want to use your computers, these computers for school, school purposes rather than personal purposes. And that's the syllabus. Any general questions on the syllabus or the general concept of the class? Okay, if you'd like to, you can print that a little later or you can email it to yourself if you'd like a copy. And again, on your own, uh, in the network folder there, you can read more completely on your own, the other item that was there was the student code of conduct. This is the same thing that's on the wall over there, so uh, you can read that so that you can understand it. One of the first things I want to talk about, this will make sense uh, for most of us that were here last month, but if you're new this month, uh, here's something very useful for you. Go ahead and open up your web browser. And we're going to go to the website buffer.com. Buffer.com. I'm also going to write notes as usual. And I'll put those in the network folder at the end of the day. Buffer.com is a social media management tool. With one login, you are able to control multiple social networks at once. Last month, what are the networks we talked about? It was so long ago, please remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Google Facebook, Plus. Google Plus, yes. Twitter. And Twitter. Twitter. And Twitter. So Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter. We talked about three networks. And last time, right, we learned all of those things and we needed to log in and make updates and all of that individually. Well, it was a bit of effort uh, to sign in to each one of them to use them. So sites like Buffer uh, allow you to uh, connect to more than one at once and manage them all at once. So Buffer, a better way to share on social media, log in on desktop, mobile, or tablets, and you'll be able to control all the popular networks. Not all of them, but all the popular ones. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, um, and, and so forth. So it sounds like a really uh, good service. It is. I've used it. It's pretty powerful because in one control panel you can create a post, attach a picture, link, etc. Schedule it about when will it appear and to what networks it will be sent to. I'm going to post this to the Twitter and the LinkedIn. And then you add it to the queue 
and it'll get sent off to where you need it to go. The cost of it, there is an, in, there is an individual plan where you can get started for free. Then there's one for teams. Let's see if we can get a bit better pricing. Here we go. So for individuals, the free uh, plan lets you use social accounts, one per platform. Only one person can log into the Buffer account to manage it. And the, you can schedule 10 posts at a time. You can then control these networks. The next level up, $10 uh, per month, can have 10 accounts total. So this meant over here, you can have one Twitter, one Facebook, one LinkedIn, etc. This one of 10 total, you can have three Twitters, one Facebook, two Instagrams, and so forth. No other managers to the buffer. But then you can schedule 100 posts. I'm not sure if that is per number of posts you can store in your queue at any one time per social account. Uh, so you can do 100 per account on that level. So you can have 100 tweets scheduled ready to go on Twitter at a time or Pinterest, 10 at a time on the networks on the free version. Then you get to these higher levels, which most of us will probably not need, but there's much more control or capabilities, that is. Uh, more networks, more people can manage it, more accounts, and all of that. It's pretty self-explanatory how it works, so we're not really going to log in and show it to you. Uh, you can create the account, connect the different profiles, and then manage it. So that's Buffer, the big idea behind it. One login. To manage multiple social networks. Basic free account works great for most people. Most of you have your business or your company, you have one Twitter account for it, one Facebook account, etc. That's fine. You, most of you don't need to manage multiple accounts. For myself, for example, in, in my business, we would manage multiple accounts for multiple people. So we would need the higher levels where we can create three Twitter accounts or two Pinterests and all of that. Let's see you um, schedule posts for the future. Twitter, um, on the main Twitter website, it doesn't have uh, scheduling ability. Uh, Facebook does, Google Plus does not. So not every network has some of these features. And here, Buffer, it can add to what the network lacks. So uh, you can schedule your posts. Instead of me having to every Monday morning sit down and write something for all my three networks, I can take a day and set it all up uh, a week in advance, two weeks in advance, and my posts will go out for me to the networks. Let's you target all or some of your networks at once. So sometimes you need to post a certain kind of a post or message on one network, but not on another. You can uh, target it. It doesn't have to be all or, or nothing. It can be per network. So let me mention here a couple of pros and cons. The big one of pro, the good about it is um, easier to manage all your accounts. If they're all connected in one main login, then you have less to worry about, less to manage. Easier to share to multiple accounts. Uh, but the big negative of that is uh, similar content 
on all, or actually same content. Content on all networks. It's easier to manage things if you're using the same pictures, the same text, and posting the same thing to all the networks. But it is more valuable for social media if you have different things on each network. Because if I have followers on Facebook and I'm then trying to get followers on Twitter, you're not really going to convince someone to also follow you on Twitter if they're already following you on Facebook. They're happy, they're perfectly fine on Facebook, and now they've got to go over to Twitter, so they probably won't. One way to try to uh, get more followers on every one of the networks is, well, you post different things on each of the networks to convince people to follow you on the different networks. Little sidebar here, I mentioned it previously. Posting strategy. Beginner. Same picture, text, link on each network. So the beginner is to share that picture exactly the same on all networks. Or maybe to add the text exactly the same on all the networks. Or I shared some text and a link exactly the same on all the networks. That's the beginner level. It's the easiest. It might not be the most effective. Advanced is uh, something like same picture, different text, link, etc. One thing is the same. Actually, sorry, this is intermediate. One thing is the same uh, for consistency, but other things are different. I might share that same picture of my product on all the networks, but on every network I change the text a little bit. On one network, there's a note that there's a sale. On another network, there's a different link. It's intermediate. Advanced. Different picture, different text, different link, etc. A lot of work. A lot to do. A different picture for every network. I'm on three networks, so I need to have three different pictures this Tuesday when I'm going to post, and three different witty things to write into it, and three different links and all of that. Yep, that's the most advanced way to get the most uh, traffic and results, but you um, have a lot to do, a lot to manage. So I would recommend for most of us, if we're just starting off with social media, it's fine to do the beginner level as you get acclimated to how the networks work and get your voice, uh, get in the groove of how you're going to use social media, and then eventually graduate to an intermediate level where you change things up a little bit per networks. And then perhaps eventually you go to advanced where you have a lot of different content on, an, on every network. So buffer helps you uh, on the beginner level I don't believe there's very much, uh, well, via intermediate, you can schedule uh, to the different networks and schedule different things, so you can change it up a bit. All right, so any questions on buffer or these concepts? Yes. Yes, you should be able to um, to set up the, the business page as opposed to the personal one. Uh, I have to double check unless they've changed it. I have an older plan which might have given different sorts of features. I haven't checked very recently if they've changed it. I don't think you need to pay, but we can check somewhere in the deeper in the about section, I guess, to see if you need to pay or not. Can you say that a little louder? No, they shouldn't check your content. They shouldn't check anything about you, really. They, they're sort of like just a gateway to let you in. They don't really check what 
how you're using it, I, I think. In general, there probably is in the rules somewhere in the about section about how you will use or not use or abuse the system, but I don't think I've never had any experience or any colleagues that I know that had any trouble that way. All right, so for the big idea for today is we're going to look at Pinterest. Let's go over to Pinterest.com. So Pinterest.com, before we, before we go directly to create an account or to sign in, let me show you here. This is one of my colleagues. You can go look at his Pinterest.com slash Mosher13. He's a former student who now also works in the world of web design and graphic design and social media. So he's got a Pinterest account. And I want to bring up his account as an example of someone that's doing it right. This is Chuck. He's got a Pinterest account. I bring up his account also as an idea for looking at other people's accounts to get inspiration and ideas from what other people do. So it seems that for Chuck, it's working pretty well because one measurement of success is followers. So he's got 33,000 followers. That doesn't mean as I've said before, that doesn't mean he's got 33,000 sales, 33,000 customers, 33,000 whatever tangible things. It doesn't mean he's been hired to make 33,000 websites. It just means there's a lot of people paying attention to him on social media. As we've said before, social media is a marketing tool. Just like that billboard on the, on the highway, just like that ad on the radio, just because a thousand people hear your ad on the radio doesn't mean you're going to have a thousand sales. But some percentage, usually in the single digits, some percentage of people that see that billboard or hear that ad or see you on social media, some percentage will follow through and contact you or follow you or hire you. So the higher you can get your followers, the higher that percentage will be as well. And as we've said before, that social media and all of this web stuff, you have to figure out what's my purpose, what's my goal. Or Facebook, or Twitter, or Google+, or LinkedIn, etc. All of them. What's the purpose? Not just because you took a class and the instructor recommends it, you need to figure out why is it going to be useful for me. And part of the reason this class is an overview in that we cover one network per day is for you to see, I kind of understand this network more than the other one. I kind of like this one more than the other one. This one seems to have the clientele that I'm looking for. Because I can just call it a day and say everyone should be on Facebook and doing Facebook ads. And that could be very useful. That could be very powerful. But maybe I don't like Facebook, maybe the people that I'm getting on Facebook are not quality, maybe, I don't know, I have problems with Twitter, so I won't use Twitter. You have to figure out, as you use these, which is working best for you. Because I can say, of course, the demographics, in theory, Pinterest is a great network if you want to reach a female audience. But that doesn't mean you won't be able to reach a female audience on Twitter or Facebook. So what's your goal for using the networks? How will using the network increase X? And you have to define X. Sales, calls, um, follows, clicks to my website. How will Pinterest get me clicks to my website? How will Facebook get me calls to my business? How will Twitter, um, you know, get me uh, donations to my nonprofit. Chuck, in his biography here, San Diego, I'm a website designer, developer, husband, father, and outdoorsman. I'm enjoying passing along inspiration and knowledge. So, in theory, he's trying to use Pinterest for several things. 
yeah, getting hired as a web designer or developer or a programmer. But he's also got here in an interest of outdoors, outdoorsmanship, so you might want to connect with people that are interested in that same topic. He's got various boards of various topics to try to atta attract people. So for example, there's a board here, text as art. We will see as we use Pinterest, we can organize our content into boards. This is similar to collections in Google+. And actually, most likely, Google Plus borrowed the idea of collections from Pinterest, which were groups of content, text as art. Things related to this topic, so uh, look at all of these. That's pretty fun. Crocodile, the word crocodile looks like a crocodile. Dinosaur. Or over here, having the words um, make up the shape. So this is, a, this is a, an example of graphic design. He's a graphic designer, a web designer and such. He puts this content out there so that he can get followed, get visibility. Not all of these items that he's added to this board are his. That's fine. We will see that Pinterest is one of the networks that sharing is really like so much at the core of Pinterest about my uh, photo got shared to 10 people and it passed on to more people pretty fast. He's got 114 pins or things that he shared in this network. They call it pins here. Twitter is tweets. You know, different names for sharing. And for this particular board, there are 1,222 followers. So to make notes here, a quick reminder if you haven't done so yet, everyone please take a moment to mute your devices. If you haven't muted your phones, your laptops, etc., please mute your devices. Pinterest. Twitter, you tweet. Pinterest, you pin. On Google Plus, you add to collections. On Pinterest, you add to boards, pin boards. I hear them called pin boards sometimes, or just boards. On Pinterest, you add to boards. Pinterest, you can share pictures, um, video, although it's not really as common as I would have thought. I don't see video on Pinterest as much, but you, you can. And um, links, but I'll put it in parentheses because not exactly how you think. So it's very, very visual. Uh, every network has an, a big aspect of visuals, yes, but Right away, looking at Pinterest, I see lots of pictures. A very visual network. Tip. Vertical pictures are best. If you look at the various pins here or through other accounts, you know, it'll it'll accept a picture that it's that is vertical or horizontal, tall or wide, sure. But the ones that stand out more and seem to be more effective for people are those that are vertical, that are taller than wider. Because as you look through these, you know, I'm scrolling, and this one on the left over here, for example, this is one picture as a collage. And it's taking up all of this space. It's catching more attention, perhaps, because there's more of it. Where these other ones, like maybe this smaller rectangular one, I kind of pass it quickly already. Where this other one is still that picture, that's still length. It's still on the screen longer. The same on this one on the right. I can't really read it, 
or see it very well, but it stands out a little more than the rest because this is a longer, taller picture. So these horizontal ones, you kind of pass them quickly. Vertical ones stay visible to the person a little longer. We can have followers. You can be followed on your main account, or you can have individual boards followed. One of the reasons why boards will be so important as we create them a little later is that this is one of the ways that we can target the right people on uh, on Pinterest. I can create a board with certain topics for a certain audience. And so via Pinterest, they give us the ability for the person then to follow only that board. Notice we're here with Chuck. He had 33,000 followers on the main account. On this account, 1,024 have chosen to follow. Uh, this board of this content. How did you get to see the followers? Well, if you visit his account, at the very top it says his total followers, and then if you click on one of the boards to see what's in it, at the top it should show you how many followers. So this board has a lot of vertical images, so these stand out. We will, uh, we will do this together in a little bit. Um, so tip, create as many boards as you want. To target your audience. But, add to each board four to six pins. Do you see the preview of the pin of the boards? Before you click on a board, it gives you a preview of what's in the board. Those <laughs> slots get filled up with the content in the board. So if I create seven boards and I plan on putting content in them, but some of them are empty, people will see that there's a board with like empty holes in it. It's just going to say the name of what it is with nothing in it. So that's not so good for you because people will perhaps not follow because why would I follow that board with nothing in it? So all of these have, in this case, at least three pins so that the uh, board preview is not empty. So create as many as you want, but you have to fill them with content. And I'm going to say that with Pinterest, this is one of the ones where you really want to be more active than the other networks. The once a week might not, might not cut it. So for here I would recommend post two to three times per week. Now we're going to see that this might be easier than you think. You know, it seems complicated to post once a week on the other networks. And now I'm asking you two to three times per week on Pinterest. We're going to see why this might not be as complex as you think. So we'll get to that. So um, again, uh, check the inspiration of other people to see what they've done and um, 
there, there's not going to be a lot of customization. It's, everyone's going to have like a basic white design, your, your logo or icon, and a little text. It's your content that's going to make you stand out. You can't really change your background color, you know, that sort of thing. What we'll do is uh, we'll go into our first break, but during this break, you either will log in or sign up. Um, you can do that on your own, but what I'll say is if we go back to Pinterest.com, we have the option to either uh, sign up with, a, with an email address or use Facebook or Google, doesn't matter, but we want to be in a business page. The default here is create a brand new personal account. And a lot of times people create a personal profile on accident for their business and they need a business page just like the other networks. There is a way to convert it. But for this class, you want to go here from the Pinterest homepage. You can click on the business link at the bottom, which takes you basically to business.pinterest.com. That's where you want to go as a business account. I'll add that to the links, or to the notes. But this is the business portal where I would recommend you, uh, you visit here uh, to read uh, their own advice and tips on how to use Pinterest for business and case studies. You know, how does this work for different companies? More advice and all of that. But we'll take our first break. You need to go in here through the join as a business, and then after the break, we'll we'll use it. Are you going to show us how to convert it if we already have? Uh, no, not quite. But it's going to be here in the in the settings, and then during the break, we can look at it if you need to. So it's ten twenty. We're going to take a break until uh, ten thirty. So either sign in sign up. Again, I, as I usually do, I recommend just create a brand new account that we can delete so that we can learn the concepts of how Pinterest works without any pressure of doing it on our real business. And then you can delete the account later and apply these concepts to your real account later.